A commercial roof system is more than just the top layer of membrane that you see. There's a lot of components and they all have to work together to keep your commercial roof system really functioning right. So let's have a look at what they are, right? When you have a commercial roofing system, the, the base layer, the foundation for all commercial roofs is the structural roof deck, right? So if we're, construct if we're building a little roof over here, this is the roof deck at the bottom. Now, this is the weight-bearing compart uh, part of your roof system. It's built to support all of the roofing layers above it, as well as if you have any HVAC mechanical units um, or other you know, solar panel systems or other items that are located on the roof that are heavy and need to have a, a strong support base underneath it. That's the roof deck. Usually, this is gonna be a thick gauge steel. In most commercial properties, it can often be uh, plywood or wood plank deck and sometimes it's also a concrete deck. So on top of the, uh, the structural deck, sometimes there's a, a vapor barrier. A vapor barrier, thin vapor barrier, is gonna be installed if your building use dictates that. And usually it's gonna be if you have a lot of moisture happening inside the building. A great example that we see a lot of the times is uh, commercial kitchens, right? You're gonna have a lot of moisture inside the property you need to have that vapor barrier as part of the roofing system to make sure that no uh, water vapor is moving in either direction, either upwards, evaporating through the roof, and of course we don't want any water coming down, right? So that's a uh, dual purpose vapor barrier. And then over the vapor barrier, or a lot of times if it's not a, a commercial kitchen, um, right on top of the roof deck, we have insulation, okay? Insulation. You can see as part of our example, we have two layers. That is very common out here, uh, especially in the Denver area. We usually have two layers. Now the insulation is above the roof deck, as you can see in our example. And it is it's something that's very different from residential roofs as compared to commercial. With residential roofs, your insulation is usually below the roof deck. It's above the ceiling, but below the wood roof deck. In commercial roofing, you have a roof deck, insulation is part of the roof system. It goes on top of the deck. Now, the most common type of insulation that's installed as part of a commercial roof system is polyiso. It's a, a dense foam board that you get a lot of insulation value in just a, a little bit of thickness. Now, usually it, in Denver, we a lot of times, depending on the building, depending on the county that we're in, we're gonna to have to install two layers of that thick foam board in order to achieve around four or five inches of ISO foam. And that gives us the right R value of insulation that we need based on whatever building code that we're operating by based on the county or city that we're in for that project. Of course, the insulation serves a really important purpose. It needs to keep the interior either heated or cooled without any air seepage out you know, through the roofing system. So really uh, critical part of your roof system. Um, when you get a, a roof replacement, oftentimes because we're replacing that insulation, you're gonna see a lot of energy efficiency gains out of that roof as well. Now, on top of the insulation, this is the part that a lot of people don't know about, is you're gonna have a cover board, all right? Now the cover board is not nearly as thick as the insulation. Um, it can take a lot of forms. It can be a kind of like a wooden fiber board it can be a gypsum board. Um, there's, there's different materials that can be used, but what it really is, is um, it's a firm, firm board to give the roof some durability. So that's what's gonna be able to support things like a solar installation, HVAC units, or just regular foot traffic. You know, the, the ISO insulation is dense, but it's not firm. It can't support that much weight and certainly can't it won't, it's not gonna protect your roof system from things like hail or any type of falling debris the same way that your cover board will. So it, the cover board actually used to be optional, right? It wasn't installed as, as part of every roof system. But then in 2006, the NRCA, the National Roofing Contractors Association came out and said, actually, that should be part of every roofing system, right? So now, nowadays, um, in the in the you know the past 16, 17 years, that is part of every roofing system that's installed, or should be if you have a licensed contractor installing it. Then on top, on top of the cover board, you have your roofing membrane. Okay, roof membrane goes on top. 
This is the star of the show, all right? This is the waterproof material that gets all the credit as part of the roofing system, and rightfully so. It has, you know, probably the most important job. This is the, uh, the waterproof material that's gonna keep everything beneath it dry. Um, the most common types of memory that we're seeing installed now is predominantly TPO roof. Um, it's a thermoplastic ro uh, roofing membrane that's heat welded together at the seams. The other really common option that we see nowadays is EPDM. It's a rubberized roofing membrane, R fantastic system. Both TPO and EPDM are great roof materials. Um, there's also, there's other fantastic options as well that are still being installed today, even though TPO and EPDM are the star choices. There's still a lot of PVC getting installed. Uh, there's still a lot of modified bitumen. It's an asphalt-based system that's getting installed. There's still a lot of built-up roofing that's getting installed. That's another asphalt base, which is with multiple layers and plies, different installation technique. Um, and so there's, you know, you got options if you're a commercial property owner. The TPO and EPDM, and, and a lot of times PVC also, that comes in a 10 foot wide roll by 100 feet long, right? So we're gonna get that huge roll up on your roof, roll that out on top of the cover board and, and uh, the right measurements that we need based on the specifics of the project. And then other components, you know, these are just the main components, but really a material list when we're building a new commercial roof is going to have dozens of items. Sometimes hundreds of different items are going to be part of that roof system. Things like metal edge flashing, whether you have parapet walls that need a cap metal to go over, or near your gutters you may have a different metal flashing, a drip edge at the gutters. Um, there could also be uh, you know, penetration flashing for things like HVAC units um, or skylights uh, or, or other other roof pendant, you know, just a, a plumbing vent stack, you have a different type of, of uh, flashing that goes onto those, those units. And then, you know, something that's not mentioned here is fasteners and adhesives. This is what keeps it all together. Typically, you're going to have fasteners that are going to, uh, there's screws that are going to, with plates that are going to go from the cover board down through the roof deck, right? So you're going to have a screw that starts here all the way down through the roof deck with a plate beneath it. And then between the membrane and the cover board, that's where we have glue. And that's how it all kind of connects together and it stays put even in the high winds that we experience here in, in the Denver area. So there's a lot going on here. It takes a lot of these systems all working together, working the right way to keep your commercial roof functioning properly. Especially if you have a warranty or if you have that insured, you want to make sure that all these things are working. That's why we, we suggest having your commercial roof inspected once a year. And if you're in Denver and you're looking for somebody to do that, the team at Sol Vista can help. Give us a call.